every business that has underestimated the smartphone and every product that has tried to fight it has either been absorbed by or conquered by the smartphone. The companies behind the personal digital assistants of the late 90s caught on to this very early, and the first true smartphones showed up around the turn of the century. In 2004, The Daily Show made fun of the nascent notion of camera phones, a category that would of course go on to devour most of the point-and-shoot market. In 2005, the CEO of Verizon Wireless asked why in the world anyone would think their cell phone would work in their house, even though mobile phones were of course already eviscerating the landline business. Folks, Everything from the humble flashlight to the iPod or MP3 player to the centuries-old tradition of the wallet has been or is being absorbed into the ubiquitous smartphone. So when I suggest that maybe the smartphone could kill off the laptop too, just think twice before you say Mr. Mobile has finally lost it. I'm Michael Fisher, and I took a trip to Mystic, Connecticut with only a smartphone-powered laptop as my computing companion. I'll share what worked and what really didn't. To realize that road trip review, I used a feature called Samsung Dex and a laptop accessory on loan from NextDoc. But what if I told you that much of what I'm about to show you was possible a decade ago. 2011's Motorola Atrix was a smartphone known for two things, bringing a terrible fingerprint sensor to Android for the first time, and this $500 accessory. Friend of the channel Nick Duncan sent this over, and I was struck by how smartly designed it is, even compared to most modern equivalents. You flip out this hidden dock around back, plug the phone into the provided micro USB and HDMI ports, and even this ancient build of Android gingerbread adapts pretty well to the big screen, with the help of the dock's Ubuntu webtop software. While performance was widely regarded as a bit sluggish, it still worked a lot better than I expected from a 10-year-old one-off. And if you want a more full exploration of this unique device, my buddy Hayato did a throwback review last year for Android Central. I'll link it below. Now, Motorola isn't the only company to have explored the space. Really? Yeah. Explore the space. Okay. Asus made a similar device called the Padphone, which also included a tablet mode, and Microsoft bet big with a feature called Continuum, built right in to its short-lived Windows 10 mobile platform. But by far, the manufacturer that's most thoroughly mapped the edges of this particular desktop experience has been Samsung. DeX is still based on the same core notion it launched with when I covered it in 2017. Plug your phone into a bigger screen and you'll be able to control it kind of like a PC. But every year, Samsung has added features. In 2018, you could ditch the DeX dock and connect a bigger screen with a simple cable. By 2020, you could go totally wireless if your TV or monitor supported Miracast. Starting that same year, you could use a DeX app to interface with your phone from your PC monitor and keyboard. And the next phase saw Samsung bring DeX to its tablets, replacing the default Android interface with the more PC-like version when it's attached to a keyboard, as shown in this video by Joshua Vergara. But the thing that interested me the most was being able to replace my laptop with my phone. And if you're already asking why, what could possibly be the point of that? Well, you're in good company. Most of my Twitter following had the same question, and so did David Kogan. It's dumb. It's, it's not, I'll explain. I will answer that, but first let me show you the accessory I chose to make this happen. The NextDoc 360. Folks, this is a very simple device. It's a keyboard joined to a 13-inch Full HD touchscreen powered by a very lightweight UI to control things like screen brightness. There's no hard drive, no true operating system. Your phone supplies all the brain power here. Now that simplicity means it can also be used with something like a Nintendo Switch, which is a pretty cool value add for gamers on the go. Oh, and there's an extra bonus here for all you folks angry at Samsung for dropping the headphone jack and expandable storage from its recent phones. The next dock has both. 
As I mentioned, I couldn't stay at home to test this out, to fully grasp the ups and downs of what it means to make your phone your only computer in this particular way. I packed my bag for an overnight stay, and I left out of my everyday carry only one thing, my trusty MacBook Pro. In its place was my Galaxy Fold 3 and that Next Dock 360. And as a little treat for those of you interested in how well the Fold 3 cameras have aged, I shot some additional footage from the phone, which I will tag where appropriate. Let's get on the rails. To understand why I would even want to use my phone as my computer, it helps to understand what it does well. It sounds like a small thing, but when you connect your phone and open this laptop, you pick up exactly where you left off when you last used your phone. When you need to log into your Google account and answer those two-factor prompts, you can do it right on the screen. It's not having to set up a mobile hotspot or connect to a coffee shop Wi-Fi network. It's not having to repair my earbuds when I switch from the small screen to the big one. It's not having to deal with duplicate notifications across my computer and my phone, not needing to sync photos to a cloud or transfer them with a jump drive because it's all already there. My phone is my laptop and vice versa. I, again, I know it doesn't sound significant, but this economy of effort, of utility, it's a convergence of experience that you don't even need to be a minimalist to appreciate. But say you need something more robust, a capability that, for example, only exists on Windows. Well, this being the age of cloud computing, there's an app for that. I got in touch with the folks at Shadow, who were kind enough to give me a 30-day trial. And the result was that I could warm a chair at the Mystic Depot Roasters in Connecticut and remotely log into a Windows PC reserved just for me. Now, I used this awesome power to download Steam and play CD-ROM adventure games from 1995. But just think about what I could have done if I was trying to get real work done, like a real live grown-up. Now, obviously, this isn't perfect. Latency was an issue, as I didn't have the high-speed connection you really need to make this fluid. And I think there are some mouse pointer issues that Shadow still has to sort out. The mouse felt like it was lagging a little bit. But it was amazing to me that this was even possible. So anyway, after two hours of this, I've busted the next dock's battery down to 46%. So uh, I decided it's time for a change of scenery. As I head across town to the Rise Bakery on the Mystic River... I yeah, uh, hello. Midnight Mr. Mobile here. I've just learned by looking at the footage that the bakery in question was called Sift. Not Rise, but Sift. Picked the wrong pun. Mr. Mobile regrets the error. As I head across town to the Sift Bakery on the Mystic River, I reflect on the question many of you posed earlier. Why? <laughs> Why deal with all the downsides I'm about to mention when, for just a little more than the $370 the next stock costs, you could get a real notebook that wouldn't have any of those issues? And that's true. For anyone who already owns a laptop, they should not consider this. But as I often ask, what about the future? What if someday you didn't need to budget for a laptop and phone separately because the smartphone finally killed off the one other piece of mobile tech it had yet to vanquish? What if all you needed was a dumb screen and keyboard to let it live up to its full potential? Well, suffice it to say that the list of downsides to a DEX-only existence is <laughs> too long for this video. While there are several DEX docs to choose from, YouTuber Tao Huen has covered a few that I'll link below. It seems that no matter which one you choose, the trackpad experience is just atrocious. There's no false touch rejection at all, which means each time you graze the trackpad with your palm while typing, you'll get a mouse click wherever your pointer happens to be. That means you need a separate mouse if you don't want to constantly toggle your trackpad on and off, but even here the problem doesn't let up. 
If you use a mouse with a touchpad for scrolling, as I do, those ghost touches will continue. Worse yet, even if your mouse has a traditional physical scroll wheel, it'll only scroll by page and not by line, and that renders it totally useless. Yes, you can use your phone as a trackpad. In fact, that's the principal way you control decks if you use it wirelessly, but it's not ideal. I really wish the DeX accessories included something like Razer's Project Linda from a few years back. Providing a bay for the phone to sit in while it charges and serves as a trackpad is just too great an idea to leave in the past. Another big issue is the lack of a webcam, which means that if you get a surprise video call from your nephew in France, everyone say hi to Aiden, you better hope you packed a phone stand to hold the phone up so you can use its camera. Weirdly, neither Nextdoc nor most others give you anywhere to put the phone, not even a basic plastic clamp. And while using a stand makes for a great opportunity to go dual screen a la sidecar, well, Android really only likes one app to be in focus at a time. Even when I tried to use the multi-star feature of GoodLock to get around this, it didn't work. So that's a shame. And the more you use it, the more bugs crawl out of the woodwork. Simple features like find on page don't work reliably. Selecting text works like it does on a phone, not a PC, even if you're using the mouse. Some web pages just get unreadable, pixelated text at default sizes. Quick reply is broken in some apps. Again, there are just too many little downsides to mention. Oh, and battery life is another one. Yeah, the dock finally died after four and a half hours of usage, which is about half what I expect from a solid work laptop. Of course, it didn't help that I always had to blast the brightness, but as it is, this next dock panel is too dim to overcome bright daylight. And um, I bet it would have lasted longer if the phone screen would stay off while connected to Dex, but it doesn't. It always wakes up every few seconds for no reason. Yeah, at least the phone charges by default while it's attached, so you always have a full battery when you disconnect. And of course, part of that everyday carry I mentioned is a battery pack, specifically this Charge ASAP review sample I like for its built-in power meter, which tells me the next dock is only charging at about 15 watts. That meant I had some time to burn. So I ambled through an increasingly moody, misty mystic before finally settling on a family recommendation for dinner and making my way to the Captain Daniel Packer Inn to see if they could, you know, pack me in. The bartender assured me I was only marginally uncool for popping open the next dock at the bar, which told me it had gotten to 64% in the intervening two hours of charging. But my intention to keep on working was interrupted by a steady stream of sexa and septuagenarians with whom I made fast friends. And after some excellent chowder and lively live music, I wound up passed out in my hotel room with all my clothes on, watching a documentary about rum running. Which, for an evening in Mystic, is as it should be. But even that experience we can learn from. You'll notice I watched the documentary on my phone, and it wasn't just liniment-fueled lethargy that led to that decision. The reality is the Fold 3's speakers are way better than the tinny next dock ones. I briefly entertained the notion of connecting to the hotel TV, but it wasn't a Miracast set, and while I did bring an HDMI cable, I couldn't change the TV's input because, you know, hotels. But it, it didn't matter. The reality is the Fold 3 screen is big enough for late night watching, and the same goes for the S22 Ultra. I could have plugged into this if I wanted. Oh, and also the Fold's screws don't rattle out of the Fold's housing for no apparent reason, as happened to my next dock on the train. <laughs> I don't get it either. Could you force yourself into a phone-only Dex dock life despite these challenges? Yes. Of course, and by the end of my mystic visit, I was ably weaving between the bugs like a ski-free player. But there are just, as the rebel pilots say, too many of them. Now, other manufacturers have rolled out their own versions of decks, and it was Richard over at Tom's Guide, writing about Motorola's effort, who best summed it up. It's not that Motorola's Ready For is completely unusable, he wrote. It's worse than that. Ready For is almost usable. That's exactly how I feel about DeX. It feels like it's just a version away from really working. 
but those last few inches might as well be miles. Why is that? Well, if you'll permit a little bit of a speculation on my part, think about the companies making these smartphones. Huawei, LG, Samsung. They make laptops too. And so does Google, which of course also makes the Android platform. And if it wanted, I imagine Google could crush these bugs at the platform level with a minimum of effort. But that would cannibalize laptop sales. To my mind, it's kind of the same reason we don't see iPads becoming like the Mac more quickly, because then who would be left to buy the Mac? And if that speculation holds any water at all, it's a shame. Because smartphones continue to demonstrate that they could replace a laptop if given the chance, while accessory makers continue to demonstrate that they'll build the tools to make it possible. If you watch that Pocket Now video I mentioned before, or visit any of the links I will include down below to other people experimenting with DeX these days, you can see just how much better the keyboard and trackpad work on Samsung's tablet version of this platform. And you know, that just reinforces my belief that a broader implementation of DeX could play a huge role in the future of mobility, if only the companies behind the hardware and software would let it. On the way out, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Dbrand, for providing the skins you've seen on and off in this video and many others. The real leather skins in particular offer the kind of protection my clumsy fingers are looking for and the look and feel that I've missed since the days of the Moto X. So whether you're trying to protect your laptop, phone, or even your Nintendo Switch, whose Joy-Cons and screen seen here are protected by Dbrand products, hit them up at the link below. Thanks to Dbrand for sponsoring this video. Thanks also to Mystic Depot Roasters and Sift Bakery for letting me camp out for hours and hours to test and write, and to Shadow, NextDoc, and Charge ASAP for the review samples featured in this video. As always, though, no manufacturer was given an early look at this video, and nobody had editorial input or copy approval rights. These opinions are mine, and mine alone. And that's why the video is 400 hours long. <laughs> Tell me if it was too long in the comments. Until next time, I've been Michael Fisher. Thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.